Hepatic encephalopathy is a brain dysfunction caused by advanced liver failure. Symptoms vary in severity from poor concentration to coma but are often reversible with treatment. The actual pathophysiology of HE is likely based on high ammonia levels. When you eat protein or other nitrogen rich food, it gets broken down in the gut by enterocytes and colonic bacteria. This produces ammonia, which is then taken to the liver via the portal vein. Now, usually this would get converted into glutamine, but if you have hepatic insufficiency, this process gets derailed and blood ammonia levels rise. This neurotoxic substance interferes with brain function in a couple of ways. Firstly, it disrupts the synthesis of neurotransmitters like dopamine. Secondly, it causes brain edema because astrocytes, the brain cells, absorb it and swell up. Finally, it causes oxidative stress. Some key precipitating factors for HE can be remembered with the BITE acronym. B stands for brain changes, like those triggered by alcohol use or Wilson's disease. I stands for infection, anything that causes decreased perfusion to the brain like sepsis or bleeding can precipitate AG. T stands for a TIPS procedure or a transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt. This is because shunting blood around the liver limits the metabolic filtering process that it usually provides. Finally, E stands for electrolyte derangements like hypokalemia. In terms of its clinical features, hepatic encephalopathy should always be classified as covert or overt. Covert HE describes a state of low level, often subtle cognitive dysfunction. Think of the CIA, impaired concentration, sleep disturbance like insomnia, and slight personality or affect changes. Overt hepatic encephalopathy is characterized by reproducible physical signs consistent with more global cognitive dysfunction. Think of something a bit more conspicuous like the SWAT team. Monotonous, slow speech, wacky behavior like those in delirium, constructional apraxia, which describes an inability to draw objects like a five-pointed star. Finally, a flapping hepatic tremor, also known as asterixis. If you're finding this helpful, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Moving to the management of HE, it really revolves around two things. Firstly, identifying and correcting precipitating factors. Resolution of issues like hypovolemia, bleeding from things like varices, or treating infections can rapidly improve overt HE. Don't forget that people with cirrhosis are also prone to deficiencies in water-soluble vitamins too, especially thiamine. Secondly, reducing a patient's ammonia level is really important. Lactulose, usually given three or four times daily, acidifies the gut and makes ammonia harder to absorb. Dosing is usually titrated to aim for about two or three stools per day. After the first episode of HE, lactulose also is usually continued as secondary prophylaxis. In the acute setting, you can also add rifiximin, which is an antibiotic, if symptoms are persistent. In theory, this kills off bacteria producing ammonia. To recall all of this, I remember mnemonics that revolve around the word ammonia. When you smell ammonia, it has a real bite to it. This tells me the precipitating factors of hepatic encephalopathy. Now to get rid of ammonia, just remember what it rhymes with in med lingo. Ammonia, diarrhea, and bacteria. This should prompt you to treat a patient with lactulose to make them poop lots, and rifiximin to kill the bacteria producing ammonia. I've got really good original mnemonics in this playlist, so don't forget to check them out. Thanks for watching Townsend Teachings.